Um, a number of years ago, Champagne Jacques uh, penned a, a phrase calling um, for our economic development vision, which was creating an opportunity to come home. We felt that it was it was a, a very big need that if we wanted to grow the community of Haynes Junction, especially, or other uh, any of our other uh, residential um, subdivisions, you know, we have you know we have Haynes Junction, but we have three other residents. Um, residential subdivisions and so we need to have an opportunity for our citizens to to um, be able to live and work out here so you know the overall vision was yes we continue to create um, safe homes for those citizens who who kind of you know need some st stability but we also need to create an opportunity to grow the community and and the way you do that is by creating infrastructure and a big important part of that is housing um, you can't begin to start thinking about jobs or education or even healing programs without having a, sort of that base to, to which you can work from. This f fits a particular niche within an, or need within our community. Um, and, and then having a program such as this creates an opportunity for us to continue to build skills and provide exposure opportunities. You know, you have citizens who may have thought about maybe getting into log home building or construction but never had the opportunity and this is an opportunity for them to like take you know sort of dip their toes into the water so to speak get an idea of if if it's really for them um this this is is good and and it's nice to see our partners starting to sort of provide us the opportunity but not try to hold our hands through the whole process and i think this for first nations is empowering right because we get to build units that are uh, more to what we need here Having uh, energy efficient homes created reduces the burden and on our citizens, but also the nation itself and creates uh, an opportunity for, for our citizens to not have to worry uh, about where, you know, they're going to pay the, the oil bill or pay the electrical bill um, because the prices are, are skyrocketing. So building of energy efficient homes is, is, is key to us continuing to have a sustainable housing program. Well, we know that um, housing is definitely a big priority for all First Nations and all citizens within the Yukon. And this project here is rather unique in that we're able to access some local building resources while also providing the opportunity for capacity building within the First Nation. So with this project here, we have the local opportunity, local building materials, and we have some trainers that came up from down south, which is really a unique opportunity as well, from the, the skills that they possess. And then of course, we had some great uh, coordinators as well that were able to assist to make this really happen. I'm here as a supporting instructor on this build. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense to be figuring out ways to be building with local timber especially right now with the building prices going as they have been and having to import from different areas in Canada. Like if you have the resource here, why not build with it? This is actually a really good way to build, like to take advantage of the thermal mass of the timbers. The system that has been designed for this project is really well thought out and I think it'll be a really tight building once it's all wrapped up in insulation and it's going to be really good. I think it is a really efficient way to go. I mean, if you think about how much work, how much more work it is to mill a timber into framing, like two by framing. I mean, if you just have the solid six by eight in our case, then a lot less energy in the process of creating the lumber, uh, especially when you're using rough sawn, it doesn't have to go through the planer. So it is or a kiln, yeah, so it's a pretty natural way to build and I think everyone here has been pretty excited, especially getting these top plates on, just being able to use your bodies, like we've used a little bit of machinery to do a few things, but mostly we've been working with our bodies and able to raise this building, which is now very, very heavy. <laughs>
getting to know the people in this area and the guys on this build. Yeah, getting to know people and kind of wrapping my head around this project because it's a pretty different way of building. Um, so just figuring out the efficiencies for doing a pilot project like this, like it's really cool once you get the systems down and things start to flow, it feels good. So yeah, by the second cabin, things were getting really slick. <laughs> A highlight for me has been meeting everybody and seeing everybody work together to make something that we couldn't each do alone and so fast. I think it's really built people's confidence in their ability to build. They're all stronger carpenters, they know how to work together. The first thing that people say when they walk in usually is like, whoa, this feels really good, I want one. These young guys here that are involved in this project, they are being exposed to something that you know is not typically done and this is a project that's rather unique in the way it's being built so to have that exposure for them is going to carry them I believe a long ways. It's a lot more different this is much more like hard work <laughs> heavier stuff this is like gonna be super useful information in the future it's a good start while well, I'm young and everything and sort of soak everything up it's a very good experience given me an opportunity to learn how to work with big timbers and stuff like that. Like I've never actually did this kind of log cabin building so this is a, like a new uh, type of technique that, that seems to be interesting. Yeah, I got a cabin kit that has similar timbers to this that I'll be working with so yeah I will be using similar techniques as we learned here on that. I'm used to log scribing but I like how they're working with actual raw timbers that were cut here in the Yukons. White River if we're to buy like their own little sawmill, there are timbers and stuff out there that we can use, yeah, for sure. Every First Nation should do this, like they should, yeah. Like every First Nation, like I say, it should be involved with this kind of, like buy their own timbers and do this kind of work themselves for their members, right? Because you got housing problem. We also set out to ensure that these buildings would be small enough that they're portable, so they're built on skids. A few other features of the project, so we wanted to get a better understanding of the sustainability and also the energy performance. I've been working here to evaluate the performance of this cabin and another more conventional build cabin. Uh, measuring the amount of energy it, uh, it takes to maintain a steady temperature so a steady temperature difference between the inside and the outside. So that's a measure of the performance of the insulation. And then also doing another test to um, measure the effect of having big heavy log walls, which are supposed to retain heat which is a little bit different than, than just holding it in. So if you say, if you want to heat a place with a wood stove, when the wood stove dies down, how long is it going to stay warm for? So we'll be measuring both of those characteristics and comparing it with the conventional build cabin. Then we're also measuring the, um, the inside temperature and the outside temperature. Then we know the temperature difference between the inside and the outside through the wall. And then we know how much energy is, is, it takes to maintain that temperature difference. At a glance, it looks like um, the logs are holding and releasing a lot of heat. This guy here, which is a very simple energy monitor, but that connects through Bluetooth to this little device here, which is effectively just a clamp meter. So it clamps over, over a wire, which AC current is coming in, um, measures the amount of current, and then transmits that to the energy monitor. The energy monitor records that um, throughout the, the test period and then we can, we can determine how much energy was used in each hour over the whole test period. So that tells us how much energy we're using to maintain the temperature and then we're also using a data logger which is right here. Um, so this records four channels of, uh, of temperatures some aspects of the wall design and explain how the logs are put together. This is a method called piece on piece. One of the advantages of using this method is that um, green logs can be used. So 
that's an advantage in not having to source dry seasoned logs. So the way piece and piece works is that you have these vertical posts and then a groove is cut in the post and also on the ends of the logs and then a spline or a key is fitted in between them. Wooden dowels connect these logs to each other for stability. We anticipate shrinkage um, using uh, unseasoned logs but that's fine because uh, we place wedges in the top. Now it's covered up with trim right now but um, by placing wedges in the top and maintaining pressure on those, banging them in every so often, it pushes the logs down and it means that you can manage a gap at the top rather than having gaps show up in the middle of the wall. And then after one or two seasons of using wood heat in a building like this, um, all the shrinking should be uh, finished with. Some of the problems of course with the situation we're in as a result of the COVID and pandemic is availability of materials and then of course when you do get the materials the price is so high. So building with the local materials I can see that this is a great introduction to opportunities and options for building homes in the future. It took a lot to get here. It's definitely a really lot of coordination from those that are involved, from contractors to consultants to staff to directors to funders, from CMHC funding, to Yukon government, the Energy Solutions Centre and also the workshops that have been done that involve experts from all different fields related to energy efficiency and taking all those opportunities and aspects and experience and looking at all that and to be able to come to this point here that's going to provide this opportunity for housing not only for the citizens and their families but also the long-term gain for the participants to gain the knowledge to be able to carry that into their future and for Champagne-Jacques with the capacity development for the community as a whole. I really see that as a great opportunity. And so with that, I want to thank all those that were involved to make it happen.